Welcome to our today's lesson. My name is Jacob Kitoto from School of Hospitality, Travel and Tourism, Department of Hospitality Management. We are looking at uh, meal planning, management and service. Our unit code is CHT 1314. So um, our topic for today, we are looking at the equipment uh, for preparation and service of food. So uh, preparation and service of food equipment. Now, uh, meal planning, as you know, we said normally this deals with the food. So before you present food for consumption, food need to be prepared. And foods are not prepared in a vacuum. They are prepared using equipment. After preparation and cooking, you need to, pre uh, to present them for a service so that they can con uh, be consumed. So, uh, as I said that they are not prepared in a vacuum, they are not cooked in a vacuum, they are not also uh, served in a vacuum. They are served using, they are uh, also prepared using equipment. And that is what brings to us uh, to study the equipment for preparation and service of the meal. Now, let us start with cooking equipment. Cooking equipment, there are various, there are many. And some of, uh, just to mention some, we have what we call range top. And this is the most important cooking equipment in the kitchen. And the range tops, they, we have various types. We have the ones that have open elements, you will find that this uh, kind of equipment, they have banners, either electric uh, coils or in form of a gas flames. So, uh, find that they, they are faster. They are faster in giving out heat and can be turned off faster and of short use. So, uh, that is why uh, range tops are mostly used or widely used in the kitchen. Uh, we also have flat tops or hot tops. So these flat tops or hot tops, normally banners are covered with steel plates. So, uh, and it also have more space, uh, more cooking space that's available. So it supports the moderately heavy weight because it is uh, something that is a, a kind of heavy. We have heavy duty flat, uh, flat top. Those are banners that are covered with heavy uh, cast steel. We have also induction tops. So induction top, find that the top is of an induction unit that has not become hot. Normally it becomes hot immediately, uh, immediately an item or uh, uh, an equipment is placed over. So once the equipment is placed over, the, it comes out. Once the equipment is removed, then it, it goes off. Next equipment, we have ovens. Ovens, these are equipments that are closed. They have the closed spaces in which foods are heated, which means foods are cooked in the oven, not outside the oven. So it, it is, uh, does not have banners like the ones that we have just discussed. This one, we cook food inside. So find that uh, our ovens, they are usually made hot. Yani they are made hot by, by hot airs that are inside. When you put uh, the oven on, which means when uh, ovens are normally using either gas or electricity, whichever uh, you use. Electricity, when you put it off, then uh, it, uh, it, is, it circulates inside. The heat circulates. That makes the oven to be so hot. Uh, it can be by microwaves or infrared radiation. So uh, I find that many foods uh, can be simmered, stewed, braised, or poached inside the ovens. And I said, as I said earlier that 
we cook food inside the oven. So there are many kinds of ovens, uh, even though we are just going to discuss a few, but there are many beyond what we are going to discuss. One, we have what is called conveyor ovens. Conveyor oven carries food through the ovens on steel conveyor belt. We have holding oven or warmers. Holding ovens or warmers. Uh, these ovens are designed to hold many types of foods at a serving temperature for extended period without drying or overcooking. So these ovens, uh, basically, they are used uh, where the foods are cooked, but they can be placed to wait for the, uh, the time for service to come. So uh, we, uh, the, 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 the heat that is subjected to this oven will not uh, make it, it will not make the oven to become overheated uh, until the food is overcooked. But it is a moderate heat that will retain the heat before the food is consumed. We also have a convection, a convection oven. Convection oven contains fans that circulate the air and distribute the heat rapidly throughout the interior because of the forced air. Food cook more quickly and lower temperature. So convection ovens, it has fans inside. You remember fans rotate. So uh, also some, uh, it, when it is subjected to heat, then as fans rotate, then the heat also uh, rotates inside. That covers the whole oven. This the heat that will be used to uh, cook the food. Because remember, it is a kind of forced heat inside. So it will uh, it is the one that will cook the food and it will do it very, uh, more quickly than uh, the other ovens that we have just dis uh, uh, discussed. Next, we have revolving ovens. Revolving ovens. Revolving ovens are sometimes called real ovens. They, are, they have larger chambers. When we talk about chambers, we are talking about the compartments, the compartments within the ovens. So they have uh, larger chambers containing many shelves or trays uh, on attachments like uh, Paris wheel. So uh, uh, when you look at the ovens, you will see uh, those compartments. They are like shelf. So if you are cooking something, you put uh, that food item in a tray, that will, then you insert it into the oven. We also have, uh, we also have a combination a steamer oven. Combination steamer ovens, uh, a certain, uh, another term called it combi oven. Many people refer it as, it as combi ovens. Uh, this one can be operated in three modes. One, as a convection oven. Two, as a convection steamer. And three, as a high humidity steamer. So that which means it is a combination of the three ovens that we have just discussed. Uh, in this one, you find that the moisture is being injected into an oven while roasting, uh, when you are doing roast, roasting, like uh, when you are roasting a meat or you are roasting something else. This one, the, uh, the, the moisture is injected so that uh, uh, it can help reduce any shrinkage or drying off of the of the food item. We have broiler or salamander. It is an equipment, cooking equipment. A uh, broiler and salamander. Uh, broilers are sometimes called overhead broilers. Overhead broilers generate heat from the above, and food items are placed on. Uh, what we call a grate beneath the heat source. It's, it is uh, kind of an oven, but it has some grillers, uh, grills inside. But normally, heat comes from above as compared to other grills that we are just going to talk about. So we are saying that broiling is one of the best way of preparing steaks, chops, chickens, and many other items. So it is important that when you are preparing a meal, as we had 
talked about uh, uh, having having uh, uh, having variety, variety in terms of texture, variety in terms of uh, color is important. So that uh, you, when you are cooking, you also look at the method of cooking. So uh, broiling is one way of cooking. It will give you a texture that is required by the, the customer. Then we have grills. Grill, uh, grill is also another equipment are used for this uh, same, same cooking operation as broiler, except the heat is below the grid that holds the food rather than the above. As I said, when we, 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 we have talked about the broilers and salamanders, we have realized that, or we have seen that, the heat comes from above. So when we talk about the grills, grills are always the same, as I said, that they have uh, this, uh, the, the bars, the, uh, both of them, both the grill and the broiler, they have bars. But with the grills, the heat comes from the, uh, uh, from the beneath, while uh, broilers, heat comes from above. We have griddles. Griddles, they are flat equipment. They are flat equipment and uh, smooth. The, the surface are heated with, uh, uh, on, on, on which food is being cooked directly. So normally, uh, the griddles, those are flat e cooking equipment so that, so once they are heated, then the foods are, can be cooked uh, on them immediately. And then no, mostly flat foods, like when we are uh, making uh, like pancakes, we are making like uh, 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 toast, uh, French toast, hamburger and so on and so forth, fried eggs, meat, you can use the, uh, can use the griddles. We have deep fryer. Deep fryer as an equipment, a deep fryer has only one use. Normally it is used to cook food in hot fats. We have steamers. Steamers cook, uh, uh, steam cookers are ideal for cooking vegetables and many other foods rapidly, uh, rapidly and with minimum loss of nutrients and flavor. So, and that is why we, uh, we, we've talked about uh, steam, uh, uh, steam cookers used for vegetables. Remember vegetables uh, requires only some few uh, minutes and if you don't take care of uh, vegetables when they are being cooked then there are a lot of nutrients that are lost so for you to maintain the nutrients and even the color then you need to use this uh, steamer cooker uh, the steam cooker so that you can be able to retain uh, the nutrients and also uh, the loss of nutrients that is uh, we have so we have talked about those are cooking equipment cooking equipment now we want to look at the processing equipment processing equipment processing equipment these are equipment that are used to uh, prepare food before they are subjected to further cooking they can be cooked halfly and then before further cooking you do you process them we want to look at this equipment now one of these equipment there are also many one of them we have mixtures Mixtures, we have like vertical mixtures, which are important and versatile. When we talk about versatile, we, we are saying that they are, can be used for more than one use. Uh, so, mixtures are used for processing food, which means, for example, if you are making a mashed potato, mashed potato, you will have to use a mixture for you to uh, mix, uh, make it mix it with the other ingredients. Also, when you are making something like mukimo, you will have to use a mixture. When you want to make uh, things like uh, uh, breads, you will have to use mixture. So mixture, uh, mixture will help you to process other foods before further cooking. We have slicer. A slicer is a machine that is used to slice food more evenly if you want your food to become or to appear in uniform like bread if you want to have a uniform slicer then you will use slicers to slice your bread so that uh, when you are giving out the uh, uh, in terms of portion you have equal 
and uniform portions uh, so that the, it doesn't look like uh, others get uh, bigger portions and others get uh, smaller portions. So you will use a uh, slicer in order to come out with the, with the equal portions. Uh, then we have also blender. Blender, uh, blender is also a processing uh, equipment that is used mostly in the uh, commercial kitchens where you blend or mix food. Like uh, when you are preparing soup, soup, vegetable soup, you will have to use blender in order to make it to purify it, to, uh, to make it uh, uh, come out with a puree or emulsifying liquid such as uh, the, the soups that I've just talked about, uh, sauces and even butter, you will use the blender. So blender is also important because it is used for blending or uh, uh, processing uh, foods such as soup, such as sauces and so on and so forth. Blenders are also used in uh, uh, coffee houses or bar houses to prepare certain drinks. So uh, blender is such important processing machine. Uh, so uh, next we have holding and storage equipment. So we have talked about uh, cooking equipment. We have talked about processing equipment. Now we are talking about uh, holding and storage equipment. Uh, when we're talking about holding and storage equipment, these are basically equipment that will hold and store food while they are not uh, being used. Because even if you process, you will have to put it somewhere. You will put it in a, an equipment. If you prepare, you will put it somewhere. And that is part of the preparation. So uh, uh, when we are holding food, we have both hot and cold. The way you will hold a uh, hot food is different from the way you can hold the uh, cold food. So when we look, about, uh, we look at hot food holding equipment, we can see there are several equipment, several equipments are used to keep food hot for service. Uh, especially once you produce or you cook food, you can put it for some time to wait for until the service time comes or until the people who want to consume food are ready. So, we are saying that this equipment is designed to hold food above 135 degrees in order to prevent the growth of bacteria that can cause disease. So, as I said that food need to be kept, hot food need to be kept hot until they are consumed. So, for you to keep them hot until they are consumed, uh, you need to have an equipment that will help you to make sure that they are hot because if they get cold the bacteria will get chances of attacking the food and hence uh, affect the people who are going to consume the food because food continues to cook at the same uh, at this temperature it should be held for as short as a short time as possible so uh, again holding food Holding hot food should not go for a long time because, remember, the, uh, the, 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 the equipments are hot. So if you keep them for a longer time, that tells you that the, uh, the, the, the food keeps on being cooked. And if it continues, it might overcook. Uh, so uh, we, are, we have various uh, holding equipment. Holding equipment we have. Uh, uh, steam tables. Steam tables are standard holding equipment for serving lines. As I said, that these are uh, th th they are kind of tables which have holes. They are kind of tables that they have holes in line. So once you cook food, then you uh, you uh, you place in those holes. They are called steam tables. They are subjected to steam. That steam is what makes them. Uh, hot because uh, uh, the, 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 the steam, the steam is always uh, kept hot, and when the steam kept hot, then the food inside will always be hot. We also have a bain marie. A bain marie is a hot. Uh, it is a hot water bath in a container that is a half filled in a container. It's a large container that half filled with water, and this water is not all that hot. It is. Uh, it is warm. 
that is uh, it is not all that hot but it is warm so uh, containers of foods are set on a rack and a shallow container of water which is heated by electricity gas or steam okay uh, when you look at it with the uh, steam tables they are more or less the same but this one uh, you can uh, uh, you can modify it in such a way that it uh, fits the the, the, the foods that you have. This is where we use inserts. So you put an insert uh, over the water, um, uh, over the water in the Ben Marie, then you put food. So it will always be kept hot with the hot water that is uh, inside. Then uh, we also have overhead infrared lamps. Overhead infrared are used in service areas to keep plated food warm before it is picked up by the service staff. They're also used for keeping large roast uh, warm. So uh, those are the preparation equipment. Then let us look at the service equip uh, cold food storage equipment. Those are the ones that we have talked about are uh, hot food, uh, hot food uh, holding equipment. Cold food holding equipment, we have uh, uh, as I said the other time that cold food, hot food must be kept hot. At the same time, cold food must be kept uh, cold. So the quality of food you serve depends on the great degree on the refrigeration equipment, which means that cold food, we keep them in a refrigerator for you, uh, for them to remain cold. And at a, a temperature below 41, or five degrees uh, uh, centigrade. So the, uh, at that time, the, the, at that time, the temperature is very low, and therefore the food will be kept cold. Now we have several types uh, types of refrigerator. We have what uh, we have a freezer. Freezer is used to hold food for a longer time, uh, or to store food. Uh, which, uh, which, is, uh, which are purchased, or the ones that are frozen in uh, uh, frozen form. We have also refrigerators. Refrigerators, they work the same way as refrigerators, only that refrigerators, uh, they only keep, uh, uh, they keep food cold, not frozen, while ref uh, freezers keep food frozen. They can... Uh, food can be frozen while refrigerators only keep food cold for a short time. Now, uh, we are saying that for enable refrigerators and freezers to work at top effect efficiency, then you need to observe the following rules. One, place item for enough parts and away from the inside wall of the refrigerator so, th uh, so that cold air can circulate. Freezers on the other hand work more efficiently when they are uh, when they are full. So make sure that when placing the uh, food in the refrigerators, then uh, you put we only place enough. Don't put more than enough so that the circulation of air is possible. But if you put more than enough, then the circulation of air is going to be impossible. Uh, next is that keep the door closed as much as possible when storing or removing an item, do it quickly and, and shut the door. So refrigerators, normally refrigerators and freezers, once you place an item, make sure that the doors are always closed uh, for uh, the temperature to, uh, 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 to, uh, to, to, for the refrigerator to maintain the temperature. Then next is keep stored food well wrapped or cover it to prevent drying and transfer of odors. Uh, what we mean is that food that are kept in refrigerators, remember refrigerators or ref freezers sometimes they contain uh, many food, not uh, more than one type. So wrap the food well so that it avoids drying out. Uh, also it avoids any odor smell that comes from food. Next uh, is that keep refrigerators spotlessly clean. Make sure that your refrigerators is always uh, kept clean. 
it is kept clean because if it is not clean, it's going to harbor a lot of bacteria that in turn will also affect the food that are kept. We have pots, pans, and containers as part of holding uh, food. Uh, we have stock pots, we have sauce, pot, uh, sauce pots, we have saucepan. Though normally, those items are used for cooking and holding. We have measuring devices. Measuring devices, you know, uh, as I said, that uh, food preparation and service equipment, they are divided into various parts. So, measuring devices, these are equipment that are used for measuring of the ingredients. Remember that in meal planning, as we said, that uh, you need to know the amount that is required so that you don't overcook and you also don't uh, undercook. So you need always to have the measuring devices. If you have, you want to prepare, uh, uh, for example, you want to prepare rice, you need to know how much rice do you need, what, how many kgs or how many grams. Then for you to know the exact amount, you will, use to, uh, you will have to use measuring devices like weighing scale. We have weighing scale here. And if you want to know how much portion does one person require, then you will have to use what is called portioning scales. So, uh, then if you want to know, for example, you need, you are using uh, things like liquids like uh, milk, you want to measure uh, the milliliters uh, in terms of liquid, you need to use uh, volume measures that will use to measure liquid item. So, uh, all those equipments are normally used to measure the amount. So, measuring spoons are used for measuring very small volumes. Uh, spoons, like uh, sometimes you are told when you are preparing food, put maybe uh, salt, one teaspoon. Therefore, you will only have to use teaspoons. Don't use uh, your hands, don't use any other device. Use teaspoons. And then... Uh, Ladus. Ladus are also used for measuring and portioning liquids. Like, for example, if you are told to uh, prepare a soup for two people, then you will, uh, you will have to know uh, one person will have maybe uh, one ladu, one ladu full. So you only have to prepare two ladus. And then we have scoops. Uh, scoops are normally... Uh, standard sizes and have uh, uh, they, they are used for portioning soft solid food like uh, we have like ice cream we have scoops for ice cream uh, we have also uh, for mousse and others we have thermometer thermometer it is an equipment that is used to me measure the temperature as we said that if you are told to cook a certain food at a given temperature, then you will have to use a thermometer. If you are told to store food at a given temperature, then you will have to use a thermometer. Now let us look at food and beverage equipment. We have uh, service equipment. Service equipment, as I said, that food we have to prepare, then we cook food, then finally we serve food. And when we are serving food, we also have to know the equipment that need to be used for service of food. So, we are saying that service equipment squarely reflect the style, quality, and standard of the restaurant. This creates the first customer impression on entering in a service area. Remember, food are normally being served in a restaurant. That is the uh, area that is designed for consumption of food. So, when you are selecting food, or when you are selecting the equipment, you must note that uh, if the impressions of the equipment are not looked at, then it might affect the appetite of the person going to, uh, uh, to consume the food. So, we have several service equipment. One of them, we have what is called tableware. We are going to look at it uh, later. We have, uh, we have special food service equipment. We have uh, glassware. We have linen. We have furniture. We have service trolleys. We have disposable. 
all those equipment you need to uh, look at them. So, uh, let's look at factors to consider when purchasing or choosing service equipment. One, the type of service offered. Two, we have the standard of the restaurant. We have type of clientele. Type of clientele is that, you know, as I said, that in meal, in a meal service, we have the children, we have the old, we have the teenagers. So you need to know the kind of people that you want to, uh, to give food to. We have decor and theme of the restaurant. We have durability of equipment. We have ease of maintenance. Durability. You need to know, uh, because like for example, if you are feeding children and you want to buy an equipment that you are going to serve uh, your meal uh, with, then you need to buy uh, an equipment that even if a child uh, uh, knocks it down, it will not break easily. We have uh, availability when stock runs out, that is the replacement. If in case the stock runs out, is there any replacement? The storage availability, is, is it possible for you to store it? Like you see, there are some equipment that you can store it, you can stack them and store the same equipment that you cannot store them easily. We have flexibility in use. There are equipment that are not friendly, uh, the user friendly. So you need to know whether they can be used by uh, people who are preparing food. And again, we have the price factor. That is the cost of the equipment must be checked. The standardization, that is the standard size and color is very much important. Now, let us look at tableware. So, what are these tableware that we are talking about? Tableware uh, is a term recognized as embracing all items of flatware, cutleries, and hollowware. I know we still, you can still ask, what are these flatwares and hollowares? Okay, now, an example of flatwares and hollowares, uh, we have uh, a soup spoon for serving of soup, in cups. We have fish knives and forks uh, for fish and uh, ho ho host divorce. We have joint knife or joint fork for main meal. We have dessert knife or dessert fork for serving desserts and sweet. We have dessert spoon uh, uh, for dessert spoon for service of some soups and cereals. Then we have fruit knives for fruits. We have coffee spoons for coffee. We have teaspoons for tea, fruits, and cocktails. We have serving spoons. We have steak knife. We have great uh, grape fruit knife. We have cheese knife. Hollowers, those are flatwares. Then hollowers, we have okay. The term hollowers, just that like uh, we have uh, we have, we have uh, uh, pronounced the term flatware. Those are uh, items that they look flat, while hollows they are deep in uh, they are deep in nature. Uh, so, so always we have soup, to, uh, soup to read, uh, we have soup bowls, we have trays, uh, we have water jugs, we have sauce boards, we have special food service equipment. What? Why do we call them? Special. We call them special because uh, sometimes they, they are not, you don't uh, use them normally. They are used in special cases. They are used in special cases. For example, we have flower bees that are used for all uh, flowers. So flowers normally they are placed where, when requested or when you are hosting a special occasion. We have fruit stand which are used to display fresh or whole fruits. We have tea strainers, um, we have candle stands, we have sandy coops, we also have oil and vinegar um, holders, we have jam and marmalade pots, we have toothpicks holders, we have straw holders, we have chaffing dishes. We have also linens. So why are we talking about linens? So we are saying that linens in uh, 
catering establishment or meal preparation establishments is normally held in housekeeping departments or linen room and is issued upon the receipts of the requisition. Linens are used normally to decorate, to decorate the service area. They are laid over the tables, service, uh, uh, the, the service tables, so they make the room become attractive. That is why it is important or it is also placed as an service equipment because it is used in the service area. So it is also important that you make, uh, ensure that this, uh, the linens are protected. They are kept, they are not misused. And that is why we have uh, linen rooms within the meal preparation area. They are linen rooms. And when you want a uh, linen for the control purposes, linens are exchanged uh, as per the request, they are, they, are, they are issued as per the requisition. Then uh, we are saying that for the effective control of the linen, should there uh, should be exchanged or uh, requ uh, requisitioned or issued on the basis of one one. If, for example, I need a service cloth or I need a tablecloth or I need uh, uh, I, I, I need a napkin, then if I need two napkins, I have to take two dirty napkins. Then I'm given two clean napkins. Now, factors to consider when purchasing linens. One, the class of the establishment. We need to know the class of the establishment. Remember, meal planning, uh, meal preparation, you can prepare it for commercial or for welfare. So, remember for commercial, that is, you need, you, uh, you want to attract customers as much as possible. In welfare is whereby you can, uh, you can just give them because it is something that is, give, uh, is given at a subsidized price. But in, in, uh, 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 in a commercial is whereby you, uh, you are looking at these customers and you want these customers to come back. So you, you will have to make them or to ensure that they are satisfied as possible. So you need to look at the, uh, the class of the establishment. Which class is that establishment? The type of clientele, the customer that you want to uh, prepare meal for. Then the cost involved so that you don't choose uh, very costly linens. Then the style of menu and service offered. Service of food, are, they vary. We have what is called uh, silver service, we have what is called plate service, we have self-service and so on and so forth. So you check the linen as per the service that is being offered. Furniture. Why furniture? And why must we have it in our meal service area? It is important because, remember, this is uh, where we have our tables, we have our sideboards, and so on and so forth. So, our furniture must be chosen according to the need of the establishment and determine the dining arrangement. As I said that in a restaurant, a restaurant is the place where the dining takes place. Or we have a dining room. So, that dining room or a restaurant, you need to have the furniture. And the furniture that you have will determine the arrangement of the room. So, by use of different materials, design, finishes, and arrangement, one can change the atmosphere and appearance of the food service area to suit different occasions. Remember that in meal service, you can be serving people who are holding, they have uh, uh, occasions like they have wedding party or they have birthday party or they have any other occasion. So uh, that is why it is important that you look at the design that will fit the occasion that might come. So if you are always holding wedding, then when choosing the furniture, you must choose the furniture 
that will fit the occasion. If you are holding birthdays or you are not holding uh, maybe conferences, it is also important that you uh, buy your furniture as per. Factors that will influence the choice of the furniture, we have the type of the restaurant. That means that the materials used will depend on the type of restaurant, e.g. formica or plastic. Uh, we have the decor of the restaurant. That means that the choice must be in line with the restaurant and the decor. The type of clientele or, or customers. Customers, they have different uh, preferences. So you need to know what your customers like or prefer and what they don't prefer. The money available is important to know how much you have what are the match that you can be used to buy the, uh, uh, the furniture so that you don't uh, buy what you are not able to buy, you don't use what you, are not, uh, you don't have. And next is the size and the shape of the service area. It is important that where there are corners and curved areas, the design of the furniture may be for that particular area and may not fit elsewhere. Uh, that is what I have said, that when you are buying furniture, you must also know your service area. If it's at corners, then you need also to look at the furniture that will fit the area. That is the end of our lesson two. Thank you very much for listening. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then, email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.